my friends, welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris. Today I will tell you a little bit more about um, the game developer hat versus player hat and how to um, go from one to the other in particular, how players can put their developer hat and what it can be used for. So what do I mean with develop, developer hat and player hat? So here, uh, when you are editing your own quest with Sorrow's quest editor, um, yeah, you have your game developer hat, you are creating maps, you are testing and so on. And your quest is, when you are developing it, is just a data directory with all the content inside so and everything is open as, as we saw in previous tutorials um, you have all, all your files here so this is when you you are developing a quest when you are the the game developer um, but what is it from the point of view of a player so as a player uh, probably you would download a game at some point. Let's, uh, for example, download. Uh, where is it? This one, Zelda XD2, which is one of our games. When you download a, a quest here, it's a single file actually. It's a dot Solaris uh, file. So I will download it uh, in some folder here. And yeah, that's it. Yeah, so it's a single file, it's a dot solaris, but actually a dot solaris file is just a zip file. It's it's a sim very simple zip archive and you, you can even open it and see the content here. And the content is exactly uh, what you would have in, in the data directory if you were the game developer. But as a player, it's just a .solaris file. And players um, usually use Solaris Launcher. They would add their uh, downloaded .solaris file to the launcher and they would just play it without even knowing that without even knowing anything in particular about uh, what is this uh, .solaris file. So, yeah, in this tutorial I will explain uh, from the point of view of a player how they can uh, yeah, put their developer hat and what it can be used for. So, let's assume we are creating this quest here and we played Zelda XD2 and we loved it and we want to for example use for our own project some resources from Zelda XD2 so in this example yeah I will I will just show you how to um, yeah extract this into uh, some directory. So as I said, it's a zip file, so you can rename it and you can extract it. Uh, yeah, extract here. It will extract it in some directory and all you have to do is rename it to data. And now you really have the same thing as the game developer which means that you can indeed open it with Solaris Quest Editor. Zelda XD2 is now a valid quest now that it contains a data folder. So yeah, you can really open it as if you were the game developer of that quest. So wh why would you do that? Uh, there can be a ton of reasons. Maybe you are, you are curious, you want to to know about uh, how 
yeah, how the game is designed and maybe you want to debug something or make a contribution. Maybe you want to make a new translation and contact the team. So everything is possible and everything is very open. Uh, in this example, let's say we are interested in, in this Doctor Who sprite. Uh, we want to use it in our game. So let's get back to our game. Uh, tutorial quest. Uh, yeah, I had my map here. So as we saw in the previous tutorial, we can quite easily uh, import resources from another quest. So now that my Zelda XD2 quest is extracted as a data folder, I can indeed import, queen, uh, import resources from there. Sprites, NPC, and the doctor is here. So before importing it, uh, I need to double check that the license is OK. So it says free for non-commercial use. So import. And now we have the doctor in our project. How cool is that? And the license information and author information is uh, still here because I used the, the import feature. That's why it's, it's better than just copying the file from the disk. And OK, let's create quickly the non-playing character with this sprite. Uh, so we haven't made a tutorial yet about non-playing character, but uh, it's quite simple. You can click here, add non-playing character, and associate it to your sprite, the doctor. OK. And it will not, uh, it will not say anything yet because this tutorial is, is not about NPCs, it is just about um, extracting other quests. And OK, we have the doctor. Yay! Um, yeah, so as a summary, you can quite easily debug other quests, open other quests in Solaris Quest Editor and even even import uh, files and resources from there with uh, the agreement of their author, of course. Please respect the work from others. Please respect their licenses. And as a game developer in your quest, um, don't forget to put some author and license information as well so that your players uh, if they are ever interested in re reusing your assets for their quests, uh, they will have the information about what they can do. If you don't want to to share your work, uh, you can put a propri proprietary uh, license. Uh, you can do uh, yeah as you want. Uh, okay, so to summarize, when you are a Quest developer, your um, quest is a data folder. Uh, let me find it again for this tutorial. It's just a data folder with everything inside. And when you are a player, a quest is usually just one single file, which is actually a zip archive. Uh, without the zip extension, it has a dot solaris extension instead, but it's just a zip archive with the same content as the data folder. Mm, yeah, so, and, and it's very easy to uh, go from one way to the other. We just saw how to extract the dot solaris into a data folder, and to do the contrary, uh, when you are a game developer and you want to distribute your file, uh, as you uh, probably already know, you can do file build quest package and you select the destination folder and the name of your .solaris file and it will build that um, 
.solaris archive, which again is just a zip file. There it is. Um, okay, so it is indeed very easy to um, to open games from others in in Solaris Quest Editor. Well, once you know that, once you know that the .solaris file is just a zip archive, so this might raise some questions like, hey, everything is very open, it's very easy to cheat or to steal my data. So uh, we thought a, a lot about these questions and uh, after some also some experience with other game creation software where everything is uh, a bit more uh, closed, um, first there is always a way to um, to steal data or to hack a game or to cheat. Um, so that's not really the point. Uh, what we think is more important is to make it easy for uh, contributions. And if someone is curious enough to, is motivated enough and curious enough to open your quest with Solaris Quest Editor, maybe it's because they have a good reason. Maybe. Uh, they want to help you, they want to, to contribute, or they are just very uh, interested in your game, they love it. And people who do that uh, are very respectful from the work of others. And again, you, you can put some licenses to, to make it clear what, what, what is allowed or not. So technically it will be always possible to to steal uh, proprietary uh, data, unfortunately, but uh, yeah, at least uh, you can clearly state what is allowed or not. Uh, yeah, so everything is very open. We think it makes games mm, more easily reuse, reuse, oh, reusable <laughs> for the community, which is which is actually great. Um, we, you, you can you can come on our Discord server and discuss and share share scripts and share sprites, and it's very nice that uh, files can be imported from from one quest to another uh, that easily. Um, and, and I mean, not only importing files but just opening the the quests of other people in Solaris Quest Editor and uh, go through maps, go through scripts, uh, see see how it is how it is working, and uh, contact people, ask questions, and yeah, it's it's really a a, a great a great community. Um, may, maybe another concern that you have is that people will will cheat also. Uh, they will play your game and they will cheat <laughs> if they can open it in Solaris Quest Editor and remove some walls and make fights easier, I don't know. Uh, yeah, th that's true if they are really motivated. And is it is it really a problem? I mean, the game will be less in interesting for them. I mean, it's really their problem, I think. Um, most of the time, again, if they open the quest in Solaris Quest Editor, uh, it's probably because they love it and they want to do something cool with it. Um, okay, so I hope I convinced you with this little speech about uh, everything being open in, in Solaris, but uh, yeah, again, the the most important point that I I wanted to uh, to share in this tutorial is that as a developer, you have this data folder. As a player, you have that dot Solaris archive, and it's actually very easy to uh, go from one to the other. Uh, okay, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. 
uh, feel free to uh, join our Discord server and we can discuss more about this this very interesting debate about uh, everything being so open. Uh, yeah, so that's it for now. Thank you very much and see you next time. Bye.